Hello, my dear students. Yesterday, Ukrainian government continued quarantine till 11 May, and maybe it will be longer. It means that we continue our online education. Very important information for third and sixth year students that CROC 1 and CROC 2 are not cancelled, and state exams for students of six course are not cancelled. All other types of activity, including module tests, uh, in our department, uh, more the most possible will be online. I hope that you spend your homework in most useful way to pass all your tests and all your exams successfully. And today I want to continue the cycles of lecture for third year students about propedeptics of internal medicine and today will be the last lecture about signs and symptoms of hematological disorders. And before the lecture I want to discuss with you answers to tests from previous lecture about kidney disorder. The test one was about nephrotic syndrome. Uh, a six, seven, uh, sorry, a seven-year-old male suffers from generalized edema. Urine pro uh, protein excretion is 5.2 grams over 24 hours, and serum analysis reveals hyperlipidemia. The patient responds to treatment with prednisone, and eight weeks later, his urine does not contain miscible protein. If kidney biopsy had been performed while the patient's condition was pathologic, which of the following would you expect to find upon glomerular electron microscopy? Correct answer is answer 1. Efficient of podocyte food processes. Next test about nephrotic syndrome. Test 2. 57-year-old female visit her primary care physician with a significant pitting edema in her legs. She takes no medications and does not use alcohol, tobacco or illicit drugs. 4.5 grams of protein are collected during 24-hour urine excretion. A kidney biopsy is obtained. Examination with light microscopy shows diffuse thickening of the glomerular basement membrane. Electron microscopy shows subepithelial spike and dome deposits. Uh, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Here, correct option is option 5, membranose glomerulopathy. Test 3. A six-year-old girl presents to your clinic two weeks after receiving a routine immunization in preparation for a trip overseas. Periorbital edema is present on exam and 24-hour urine collection shows excretion of 4.3 grams of protein per day. Which pathological change would likely be seen on microscopy? Correct answer 5. Podocyte efficient on electron microscopy. And next syndrome, it is nephritic syndrome, test 4. Uh, multiple patients present to your office with hematuria following an outbreak of group A streptococcus. Biopsy reveals that all of the patients have the same disease characterized by large hypercellular glomeruli with neutrophile infiltration. Which patients have the best prognosis? From this patient, it is option 3. It is 8-year-old boy who undergoes no treatment. Even without treatment, the best prognosis has the youngest patient. Test 5. Nephritic syndrome 2. A 10-year-old boy presents to your office with color-colored urine and periorbital edema. His mother is extremely concerned, especially given that her son has been entirely healthy except of sore throat a few weeks ago. Which of the following would be the least likely to observe on kidney biopsy on this patient? And correct answer is answer 4. It is the least likely symptom, the linear immunoglobulin G deposition along the basement membrane on immunofluorescence. Test 6. A six-year-old boy presents to your office with hematuria. Two weeks ago, the patients had symptoms of sore throat and fever. All the physical exam is unremarkable, laboratory results show a decreased serum complement level and an elevated anti-DNA's B titer. 
Which of the following would you most expect to see on a renal biopsy? Correct answer is answer 1, large hypercellular glomeruli on light microscopy. And last test about nephritic syndrome, it is test 7. A 21-year-old male presents to your office with hematuria three days after the onset of productive cough and fever. Following renal biopsy, immunofluorescence shows granular immunoglobulin A deposits in the glomerular mesangium. Which of the following do you suspect in this patient? And correct answer, answer 2, Berger's disease. Test 8. It is about urinary tract obstruction syndrome. A 45-year-old man presents with a three-day history of right-sided flank pain due to a lodged ureteral stone. What changes would be expected to be seen at the level of glomerular filtration? And correct option 2. Increase in Bowman space capillary oncotic pressure. And last test about urinary tract obstruction syndrome 2. It is a 72-year-old male presents to his primary care physician with urinary hesistency and urinary dribbling that began six weeks ago and has gradually worsened. Rectal exam reveals a markedly enlarged prostate. CT scan demonstrates dilated ureters and renal pelvises. Which of the following likely accounts for the CT scan results? And correct option is option 1, ureteral obstruction. And let's start our lecture about syndromes and disease of blood system disorders. Okay, uh, here I change for you the main disease and main syndromes in hematology and simply shortly to explain main symptoms from here. And let's start from the most often, the most usual, usual hematological disorders, it is anemia. What is anemia? It is a decrease in the amount of red blood cells or hemoglobin in the blood or lowered ability of the blood to carry oxygen. What causes can lead to anemia? It is impaired red blood cells production. It is increased red blood cells destruction. It is blood loss or fluid overload. And here in scheme you see the main cause. It is uh, excessive bleeding. It can be menstrual bleeding, very often disorders in female patient. Very often it is iron deficiency anemia. In mo uh, very lot of patients suffer from cancer that causing anemia. Genetic, genetic factors can cause anemia. And impaired metabolism of spleen and anemia. Let's discuss more about impaired production of red blood cells. Disturbance of proliferation and differentiation of stem cells. It is pure red cells aplasia, aplastic anemia, anemia of renal failure because of abnormal production of erythropoietin, anemia of endocrine disorders. Another uh, situation when it is disturbance of proliferation and maturation of erythrocytes, like in pernicious anemia or uh, anemia of folic acid deficiency, in megaloblastic anemia, anemia of prematurity, iron deficiency anemia, thalassemias, congenital dyserythropoietic anemias, and other mechanisms of impaired red blood cells production, like, for example, in myelof, uh, myeloptic anemia, myelodysplastic syndrome, anemia of chronic inflammation. Another case when it is normal production but increased red blood cells destruction, or another name of this anemia, hemolytic anemias. It can be in intrinsic or uh, intracorpuscularic uh, due to abnormalities cause premature destruction, except paroxysmal nocturnal uh, hemoglobinuria, 
uh, all of them are hereditary genetic disorders. And uh, hemolytic anemias can be extrinsic or uh, extra corpuscular. Uh, it is antibody mediated and mechanical trauma to red blood cells. Causes of blood loss. It is anemia of prematurity. It is anemia caused by trauma or surgery causing the acute blood loss. Gastrointestinal tract lesions, acute bleeds, for example, due to peptic ulcer, chronic blood loss, like in angiodysplasia. It can be due to gynecologic disturbances, it's chronic blood loss in female patients. It is menstruations among young women and older women. Uh, for older women, it is more special uh, with fibroids. And infections by intestinal uh, nematodes feeding on blood. And hydramia, yes, uh, it is overloading by fluid. Causes. It is hypervolemia with hemodilution, normal total amount of hemoglobin and red blood cells in body, but due to overload, it is a decreased concentration of their in liter of blood. Uh, the causes, it is excessive sodium of fluid intake, sodium of water retention and fluid shift into the intravascular space. It can be in anemia of pregnancy when it is induced by blood volume expansion experienced in pregnancy. Diagnostic steps. What should we do when you suspect anemia? It is a uh, scene of clinical manifestations of clinical symptoms. Uh, it is determination of hematological syndromes, blood test abnormalities, blood biochemistry abnormalities and bone marrow abnormalities. What clinical manifestations, signs and symptoms that you can find in patients with anemia? It is weakness, fatigue, general malaise, poor concentration. A very often symptom is dyspnea or shortness of breath on exertion. Yes, and general low tolerance to physical activity. It is increasing cardiac output, palpitations, angina if pre-exciting heart disease is present, and it even can lead to heart failure in such patients. It can be intermittent claudication, and it is paler, pale skin, lining mucosa, conjunctiva, and nail bleed. And you see changes of gloss, glossitis for patient with anemia in the picture. Additional signs, they are possible in severe anemia. It is hyperdynamic circulation uh, with tachycardia, bounding pulse, flow murmurs, cardiac ventricular hypertrophy. It can be heart failure, picker, restless legs sy uh, syndrome, uh, special for iron deficiency anemia. To put diagnosis of anemia, we should uh, perform the, the complete blood count, the blood smear, to check hemoglobin, hematocrite, red blood cell size, reticulocyte count, reticulocyte production index. Yes, and uh, severity of anemia according to World Health uh, Organization and uh, hemoglobin threshold according to age. For children till five years, uh, it is a hemoglobin threshold normal in grams till 11. For children till 12, it is 11.5. For teens till 15, it is 12. For women, uh, non-pregnant women, uh, 12 too, like for teenagers. For pregnant women, it is 11. And normal for men, it is uh, 13. Color index, it is one more sign. 
according to uh, level of color index, we can characterize anemia like normochromic, hypochromic and hyperchromic. Yes, when it is normal from 0 0.85 till 1.05, it is normochronic anemia. Uh, here it is most often acute post-hemorrhagic anemia or hemolytic anemia. They are high normochronic. If color index is less than 0 0.85, we name it hypochromic anemia. And very often for chronic post-hemorrhagic or iron deficiency anemia. And if color index is more than 1.05, it is hyperchromic anemia. Uh, it is special sign for B12 deficient anemia, for folate deficient anemia and for aplastic anemias. According to size of erythrocyte, one more classification of anemia we, we can differentiate. Uh, if cells are small, we name it microcytic anemia, uh, the most special for iron deficiency anemia. When cells, erythrocytes, are large, we name it macrocytic anemia. We uh, the most usual is for B12 and folate deficient anemia. When cells are normal, we name it normocytic anemia. Uh, very, uh, the most often case it is anemias of chronic disease. That's why we have two classification: normal hypo or hyperchromic, uh, micro, normal or macrocytic anemias. Uh, according to regenerative ability of bone marrow, uh, reticular sites, we can uh, differentiate anemias to normal regenerative, hyper regenerative, and hyper regenerative. Normal regenerative, when re uh, reticular site level from 6 till 12, it is deficiency anemia, mo mostly according to iron deficiency, B12 deficiency, or folate deficiency. Uh, if it hyperregenerative, when reticular sites level more than 12, it most usual for hemolytic or acute post-hemorrhagic anemias. And for aplastic anemias, it is a uh, most usual type hyporegenerative when reticular sites level less than 6. In blood chemistry, in anemias, what can we find? It will be decreasement of ferritin, it is iron deficiency anemia, serum iron for iron deficiency anemia too. More for iron deficiency, it is decreasement of transferrin saturation. This, uh, these three signs, biochemical signs, we check to confirm iron deficiency anemia. One more time, it is ferritin level, serum iron level and transferrin saturation level. Uh, for folate deficiency anemia, we check folate, folate level of red blood cells. Level of vitamin B12 for B12 deficiency anemia. More fit for B12 deficiency. It is checking of serum methylmalonic acid and homocysteine. More fit for patients with anemia. We obligatory check renal and liver function tests. And we check erythropoietin level. Next syndrome, it's not disease, it is syndrome, it is polycytemia. What is polycytemia? It is a myeloproliferative condition that results in an increased level of circulating red blood cells in the bloodstream with increase in hematocrit, hemoglobin or red blood cells count about the normal limits. Synonyms of polycytemia you can meet in literature such terms like erythroemia, osler wakes disease, polycytemia rubra vera from Latin, primary polycytemia, splenomegalic polycytemia, wakes osler disease, or polyglobulia. 
It all terms are uh, the synonyms of polycythemia. Risk factors of these disorders. It is hypoxia from long-standing chronic lung disease and smoking, the most usual for COPD, chronic obstruct, uh, obstruction lung disease. Uh, it is chronic carbon monoxide exposure. It is people living in high altitudes due to low environmental oxygen levels. Yes, it is uh, people that live in mountains. And people with genetic mutations and familial types of polycythemia and certain hemoglobin abnormalities. Causes of polycythemia. They can be primary as a slow-growing type of blood cancer. Uh, here a disease, it is polycythemia vera and primary, primary familial and congenital polycythemia. And it can be secondary polycythemia due to physiologically appropriate disorders like adaptation to living in high altitudes and iatrogenic polycythemia. Uh, polycythemia secondary to chronic hypoxia in COPD, what I told you, in hypoventilation syndrome, in chronic heart diseases, in sleep apnea syndrome and pulmonary hypertension. Uh, secondary to erythropoietin secreting tumors like hepatocellular carcinoma that secreting erythropoietin, renal cell carcinoma, adenocarcinomas and uh, uterine tumors that secrete erythropoietin. And it can be polycythemia secondary to relative polycythemia. Uh, the underlying cause is reduced pl blood plasma. Yes, it is hypovolemia that increase blood concentration and lead to relative polycythemia. Signs and symptoms of uh, primary disorder, the most danger of it, it is polycythemia vera. It is trouble breathing when lying down. It is dizziness. It is excess bleeding. It is full feeling in the left upper abdomen and large spleen. It is headaches. It is itch net and especially after the warm bus. Red skin coloring, especially red uh, color of face. It can be shortness of breath and it can be phlebitis. Other symptoms of polycythemia that may occur in polycythemia vera, it is bluish skin color, it is fatigue, red skin spots and vision problems. And here you see uh, hyperemia, red skin of face, the typical face view of patient with polycythemia vera. To put in diagnosis of polycythemia, we should do bone marrow biopsy, it is gold standard that confirm polycythemia vera. Additionally to it, we should do CBC with uh, differential of different uh, cells in a blood count. It is comprehensive metabolic panel, it is erythropoietin level. It is genetic testing for mutations special for polycythemia. It is oxygen saturation of blood. It will be decreased as for anemia, like decreased red blood cells level, as it can be decreased saturation for polycythemia too. It is red blood cell mass and vitamin B12 level. Criteria of diagnosing of polycythemia according to World Health Organization. We can divide them to major criteria and minor criteria. Major criteria, it is hemoglobin more than uh, 18.5 grams in men and more than uh, 16.5 grams in women who are the evidence of increased red blood cell volume and presence of a specific gene or other functionally similar mutation, such as other gene uh, exon 12 mutations. And minor criteria, additionally to hyper, uh, hyperhemoglobinemia and presence of mutations. Uh, 
uh, two minor crit criteria we can name bone marrow biopsy showing hypercellularity for age with uh, trillion age growth like pan myelosis with prominent erythroid granulocytic and megacaryocytic proliferation it is serum erythropoietin level below the reference range for normal and it is endogenous erythroid colony formation in vitro Diagnosis of the polycythemia virus study group criteria. It is established if all three category A criteria are present or if uh, in category A1 criteria uh, plus uh, two criteria from category B are present. In category A criteria, it is total red blood cells mass more than 36 in males and 32 females. Arterial oxygen saturation more than 92 and splenomegaly, it is A criteria. If all three present, it is confirmed diagnosis of polycythemia vera. Uh, if it is not all three but one of them positive, we should find at least two B criteria. What B criteria it can be? It is thrombocytosis with platelet count more than 400,000. It is leukocytosis with white blood cell count more than uh, 12,000. Increased leukocyte alkaline phosphatase more than 100 and serum vitamin B12 concentration more than 900 picograms or binding capacity more than 2200 picograms per milliliter. Next syndrome for today, it is decreased uh, level of white blood cells or leukopenia. What's the definition of this syndrome? Leukopenia or leukopenia in uh, another pronunciation uh, is a decreasement of white blood cells or leukocytes present in blood that placed individual at greater infection risks. Causes of leukopenia. It is most usual viral infection. Yes, due to cold, flu, HIV, AIDS or other uh, huge number of viral infections. It can be caused by microbial infections, like uh, in patient with sepsis, very uh, high risk of leukopenia. In psittacosis, rickettsial infections, tuberculosis, malaria, dengue, etc. In autoimmune connective tissue diseases, like for example in rheumatoid arthritis, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus and other autoimmune disorders. In patients with cancer or other diseases that damage bone marrow, like leukemia, myelofibrosis, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and congenital disorders, like Kostman's syndrome and myelocahexis. Uh, it can be in vitamin deficiency, like for example in folate deficiency. Deficiency of minerals can lead to leukopenia too, like zinc or copper deficiency. Sometimes medications and radiation therapy lead to leukopenia. From medication it is diuretics, antibiotics, antipsychotics drugs and antidepressants. Signs and symptoms of leukopenia. It is anemia, thrombocytopenia, pneumonia, stomatitis, oral ulcer and various infections. It can be liver abscesses, metrorrhagias and menorrhagias, uh, neurasthenias, fatigue and hot flashes, strong desire to consume hot drinks. Diagnosis of leukopenia can be identified with complete blood count. Yes, we check uh, the general level of leukocytes of white blood cells and their formula, the different type of leukocytes. Another situation when it is too much leukocytes, it is leukocytosis. 
a white blood cells the leukocyte count above the normal range more than 50 per liter in the blood we name leukocytosis what's the principal types and causes that lead to these types of leukocytosis Yes, according to what kind of leukocytes are increased, we can different neutrophilic leukocytosis or another term neutrophilia. Here the most usual for bacterial infections and tissue necrosis. If it is eosinophilic leukocytosis or eosinophilia, it usual for allergic disorders, for parasitic infections, malignancy, systemic autoimmune disease, and for acute stresses. If it is basophilic leukocytosis or basophilia, it is usual for myeloproliferative disease. If it is monocytosis or increased level of monocytes, it usual for chronic infections like tuberculosis, systemic autoimmune disease, etc. And if it is lymphocytosis or increased level of uh, lymphocytes, it will be the most usual for viral infections and additionally to other chronic infections like tuberculosis, brucellosis, pertussis and malignancies. And you see that simple uh, complete blood count will help you to make differential diagnosis. It is a very usual symptom leukocytosis in blood testing. And according to what type, which such simple and such rapid test, you can suspect if this infection is bacterial, parasitic, viral, uh, maybe due to cancer, maybe due to autoimmune disorder, according to what changes in leukocyte formula you see in CBC. Signs and symptoms of leukocytosis. Yes, you see that it is a huge number of infections and other disorders can lead to leukocytosis. That's why it is very wide uh, range of symptoms can be in patients with leukocytosis. The most often of them it is infection signs like fever, bleeding or bruising, feeling weak, tired or sick, feeling dizzy, faint or sweaty, it is pain or tingling in arms, legs or abdomen. It is trouble of breathing, thinking or seeing. Losing weight without trying of a poor appetite. You see it is a general, uh, a general infection disorders. Uh, okay, to confirm it we need complete blood count. We told about it according to general level of leukocytes and leukocyte formula what kind uh, of uh, what kind of leukocytes uh, lead to general leukocytosis primary uh, we can put diagnosis of leukocytosis in different type of leukocytosis Excessive number of white blood cells are most often due to the response of normal bone marrow to infection of or inflammation. You should understand that this syndrome it is not disease, it's just a syndrome. And in most cases it is absolutely physiological response to the infection or trauma or other disorders in organism. And uh, you remember that inflammation and leukocytosis like a part of this inflammation, it is a normal physiological process. In some instances, leukocytosis is a sign of more serious primary, a primary bone marrow disease. Here you have to be attentive with leukemia and myeloproliferative disorders. Okay, what is leukemia? Yes, it is disease. Yes, it is a syndrome that goes with the syndrome of leukocytosis. And what is leukemia? It is abnormal proliferation of the blood forming tissues that usually begins in bone marrow and results in a high numbers of abnormal white blood cells. Causes of leukemia. Yes, uh, like for all uh, malignant disorders, we don't know any significant exact cause, but we have some suspicions. 
Yes, it is confirmed that mutations in DNA as a result of exposure to radiation or cancerogenic substance can lead to leukemia. And researchers show us obligatory genetic predisposition to leukemia. Classification uh, uh, the, All leukemias we can classify to acute and chronic according to its clinical manifestation and according to cell type, to cell type that involves to the malignant process. It can be lymphocytic or lymphoblastic leukemia and myelogenous or myeloid leukemia. And according to it, uh, these uh, two classification, it can be acute lymphoblastic leukemia and chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and acute myeloblastic leukemia and chronic myelogenous leukemia. Yes, with two classification, we get four main types of leukemia. Signs and symptoms of uh, all types of leukemia. Yes, clinically they are nearly the same. It is fever or chills. It is persistent fatigue and weakness. Frequent or severe infections. Losing weight without trying. Swollen lymph nodes and enlarged liver or spleen. Easy bleeding or bruising. Recurrent nose bleeds. Teeny red spots in skin. We name it petechia. It is excessive sweating, especially at night, and bone pain or tenderness. You see that the symptoms are very not specific, yes, and it is easy uh, rapidly to suspect a leukemia problem. Acute leukemia. It is characterized by rapid increase in the number of immature blood cells, blasts. Crowding due to such cells make the bone marrow unable to produce healthy blood cells. Immediate treatment is required in acute leukemia due to the rapid progression and accumulation of malignant cells, which the spleen over into the bloodstream and spread to other organs of the body. Yes, one more time, acute leukemia, it is a rapid increase, rapid starting of produce, very young, blood cells we name them blasts with a very uh, big volume and what is chronic leukemia it is characterized by excessive build up of relatively mature but still abnormal white blood cells it's typically taking months or years to progress to progress and cells are produced a much higher rate than normal resulting in uh, many abnormal white blood cells mostly occurs in older people but can uh, uh, theoretically occur in any age group and really in real clinic we see in all degree uh, age group chronic leukemias in even unfortunately in young patients that's why chronic leukemia it much more gradual process it takes uh, months or even years uh, it is producing of malignant abnormal cells but they are much more late if for acute leukemia it is very rapid production of very young uh, cells like blasts, it's just blood in very big volume in a uh, short period. Here, longer period, it is later cells, it's starting from blasts and later, later, later cells, but not abnormal, not normal malignant cells and more gradual process. Diagnosis of leukemia. Uh, is confirmed by repeated complete blood counts and blood films. Yes, it is checking of Philadelphia chromosome in uh, myeloid, chronic myeloid leukemia. It is bone marrow examination. It is lymph node biopsy in lymphoma. It is X-ray, MRI or ultrasound. Yes, it is visualization of place of uh, uh, metastasis and next syndrome for today it is hemorrhagic syndrome 
uh, definition of it. It is extravasation of red blood cells from the vasculature into the skin and or subcutaneous tissue in form of petechia, purpura and ecchymosis, collectively referred as a purpura, with purpuric gracious formation. What uh, want I add to definition? The extravasation occur internally where the red blood cells leaks from the blood vessels inside the body. It is very important not. Purpura or hemorrhagic syndrome forms a different type of rashes. It is petechia, pinpoint red lesions less than two millimeters in size. Uh, another name, uh, another type of rash, it is purpura, it is pinpoint red lesions, but they are uh, bigger than petechia, it is from 2 till 10 millimeters in size. And if they are bigger than 10 millimeters inside, we name it ecchymosis. You see here uh, the picture of patients with purpura. What types of hemorrhagic syndrome it can be and what causes lead to it? First type, uh, it is hemorrhage due to thromboacytopathy. Uh, in what cases it can be? Any of blood disorders characterized by dysfunctional platelets, thrombocytes, with either normal platelet counts, non-thrombocytopenic purpurous, or decreased platelet counts, thrombocytopenic purpura which result in prolonged bleeding time, defective clot formation, and a tendency to hemorrhage, like a Hanoxian lane purpura, in Willebrand disease, in thrombos, uh, thrombostenia and platelet aggregation, etc. Next time it is hemophilia. It is congenital disorders, uh, a group of it, uh, that impair the body ability to control blood clotting, which is used to stop bleeding when a blood vessel is broken. It can be several types of hemophilia. Uh, the most often of them it is hemophilia A, clotting factor 8 deficiency, and hemophilia type B, factor 9 deficiency. The most common it is hemophilia of type A. And next type of uh, hemorrhagic syndrome, it is teleangiectasia. It is small dilated blood vessels near the surface of the skin or mucous membranes machine between 0 0.5 and 1 millimeter in diameter. Signs and symptoms of hemorrhagic syndrome. It is purpura, sometimes mucosal bleeding, uh, we can usually characterize and we can, can characterize it by localization and distribution. It can be arthritis and ultra, uh, arteral gear. Uh, if it is bleeding in joint, we name uh, it a hemartrosis. It is central nervous, GI, cardiovascular, urethral symptoms involvement. It can be prolonged heavy menstrual period or menorrhagia. It is unexplained nose bleeds. It is extended bleeding after minor cuts, blood draws or vaccinations, minor surgery or dental procedures. And it is bleeding after aspirin use. World Health Organization grading scale to measure the severity of bleeding in hemorrhagic syndrome. Yes, grade 0, it is no bleeding. Grade 1, it is just petechial bleeding, that it most cases of hemorrhagic syndrome. And more uh, a serious situation, it is grade 2, mild blood loss. Grade 3, it is gross blood loss, requires transfusion or severe uh, hemorrhage and grade 4 it is debilitating blood loss retinal or cerebral associated with fatality to diagnose hemorrhagic syndrome we usually use the platelet count in CBC 
we should check a platelet function, bleeding time, platelet aggregation studies, von Willebrand factor studies and specialized tests. It is coagulation screening for clotting factor deficiency. If patients was on warfarin, uh, we should check international normalized ratio or ENR. And it is autoantibody screen for connective tissue disorders. For today, it is all syndromes and disease what uh, I want to discuss with you. It was just main things, just main symptoms, more information you will discuss with your teacher at practical classes. And uh, on fourth course, you will have cycle of hematology where you will uh, learn all disease and get more information about each disease because hematology, it is a very big and quite difficult discipline. And I uh, want to wish you good luck on test. I want to wish you good luck on CROC1. It is all lectures to this year. All of us, me and teacher of our department, are available to contact online. That's why I'm waiting for your questions. I went into your comments, to your lectures, and uh, I hope everyone will be healthy. Goodbye.